Hello everybody, this is another of Philippa Turnbull Crawler Company Lady Anne's Needlework Retreats, whatever you like to call it, um, Antique Sundays. And this is a bit of a deja vu moment if you saw my last video from last week. And it is actually the second of the pair of Crawler bed hangings that we purchased from wonderful Meg Andrews, who is a textile expert and textile dealer really and antique dealer in London and the uh, participants of the All England 2 retreats we went to have a special visit to her house and she really showed me how to display um, needlework rather beautifully and we were all very impressed and we all bought lots of things from her didn't really mean to but I just couldn't resist and um, it was a good moment and uh, she'd only just got these in and that was jolly nice actually to uh and i knew a bit about who had made them and um the influences and you can see you know influences from the 19th century in these pieces um and you can see similar designs on samplers as well if you're interested in samplers the uh vase of flowers in the center which was of course meant to represent the female um and it's all about that sort of balance in life really and showing plenty of extravagant wonderful flowers which um and the passion flower there which i mentioned last week and i also mentioned the fact that this piece is actually stitched um in double thread throughout now some areas are beautifully stitched and uh, you can see and I, think I just suddenly noticed you know when you look closely through a camera sometimes you see new things that pale blue behind the brown you know that's a really clever touch isn't it because that leaf is just bumping hopping off the page anyway going back to this bug which is coming loose on the left hand side um and is really badly stitched uh you know you would think that the um inspector in the studio that made this in the arthur lee factory would have said you know really you need to do something about that that's pretty awful because the passion flower next to this obviously contrasts and uh, it makes it look rather scrappy but never mind it got through the inspection process and um, it survived and you know what you wouldn't notice it if it was hanging on a wall all you'd see were these crazy colours and the fritillaria not worked in its normal lovely purpley native wildflower um, sort of design but actually um, in this crazy outline of an acid yellow because of course by this time they were using synthetic dye to mimic the uh, natural dyes of the past but they're pretty vivid and you don't often see something that quite scarily bright um, in very early work although they did try um, I rather like this touches of I'll just go back in there do you see these purples through to blues but Look at the way that satin stitch has just been plonked on the top of the long and short stitch there on these slightly angled sections. Actually, personally, I don't like it, but it's a brave thing to do. And keeping experimenting is the way to go because um, I will take you in a minute to an area which I think is rather clever. Funnily enough, I wondered if anybody noticed last week during our video that the hanging hanging out of our bedroom window down the front of the house was not in fact the piece I featured in the video. It was actually this piece and um, it is very similar of course and uh, the features are similar but they're arranged in a different way and oh, with this one I think this is the one that Harriet is restitching. In fact I'm sure it is because I drew it out onto the linen and I recognise the way the rhythm of these shapes go, go and do you know what she sent me a clip of this flower so she must be on the second half by now she's rather sneakily getting on with it which is um harriet's way she's a machine she's amazing now the piece i want to show you is actually this leaf coming down here and you know if you're stuck for inspiration and you're locked down anywhere just look at the pale pale color sort of it's a it's almost a fawn on the edge of the, some of these areas going through these acidy greens and then into a more neutral sea green and into the blues and how brilliantly worked that is 
and um, I'm going to take you up here to this brittle area, another brittle area, but just worked in blues. And of course, in the garden, they're not that. They're they're a purple. The snake's head brittle area is a is a purple, and they have got a purpley colour that's very similar to the colour that's used, but they don't bother going with reality. Um, they just put it in, and of course, the brittle areas have got lovely little um, markings on it. And I have very fond memories, my daughter Laura and I, planting lots of these in this house where we moved here 25 years ago. And here is a wonderful burst of culture, of colour. And if you live in a very sunny climate, you know, you, you have a different colour culture. But in England, <laughs> this, this is quite a strong colour and um, quite a surprise, I think. And... Uh, rather wonderful and I think possibly we crave something a little more colourful in our lives and that's why we love to go to Spain and places on holiday and Mexico and and places with a vibrant colour palette and I do particularly love this this is just a native um, the outline is just really a native daffodil which would be a rather insipid rather beautiful greeny yellow but look at the way these this depth of colour has just been stroked into that, just green through to blue. Look at that in the middle. Now, would you notice that if I hadn't gone in really close? I don't think I would have particularly. From here, hmm, I wouldn't notice so much. From here, it just gives a wonderful movement in the piece. When you change colour from one type of colour, from a green to a blue, a yellow to a navy, you know, you are creating movement in the piece, although it is still and it's lying there, it actually looks as though it might not be, it might still be growing. I do love this. I'm coming back to here and I wonder what's going on in that corner. Just satin stitch, actually. And this is a satin stitch and then it's been whipped with a bit of orange just for a bit of variety, or perhaps they were finishing off a thread, <laughs> sort of thing I do, take my thread across to another area and um, use it again. And if you look very closely in here, what Harriet has been finding is that she's needed to put two threads of two different colours in one, um, into one needle. And I did that with a piece from Ian Hall which is from the 1680s. So this is the middle of the 20th century and here it pops up again. So it must have been a bit of a fashion. <laughs> 